1964, child genius Frank attends the New York World's Fair to enter the inventor's competition. Judge Nix is actually pretty impressed by Frank's prototype jetpack, but he quickly changes his mind when Frank confesses the jetpack doesn't actually work well. Nix's assistant Athena likes Frank, but Nix still doesn't allow him to enter the contest until the jetpack actually works. Frank leaves utterly heartbroken and can't help thinking about all the times his own dad told him he was just wasting his time. Suddenly he's approached by Athena, who gives him an orange lapel pin with a blue tee and asks him to follow her and Nix without being noticed. Nix and his group going on a popular attraction and the line is quite long, so Frank sneaks through the side and jumps into an empty boat. In the middle of the ride, a laser detects Frank's pin and opens a trapdoor that takes the boat down a dark corridor. A futuristic-looking wagon appears and Frank is happy to enter it, but as soon as he steps in, metal blinds block all doors and windows, and the wagon begins shaking like crazy. Frank falls to the floor and doesn't get to stand up until the wagon stops. When the doors open, Frank steps out and finds himself on a platform surrounded by heavy fog. To his shock, a flying car passes by and he sees Athena with Nix inside. Frank tries to go after them, but giant robots appear in front of him and try to stop him. The kid runs around the platform trying to dodge the robotic arms and accidentally falls on the platform below, causing his jetpack to break. A friendly robot appears and grabs the jetpack to fix it before giving it back to Frank. At that moment, a group of guards arrive to capture Frank, so he steps back and falls once again. This time though he has his jetpack with him, thus he puts it on and activates it, finally getting to fly with it thanks to the robot's repairs. Frank flies through the fog and discovers he's in Tomorrowland, a futuristic city filled with only the brightest minds. When he sees Athena, Frank lands next to her, and takes the chance to show Nix that he's fixed the jetpack. Nix ignores him, but Athena takes Frank's hand to show him what his life will be like from now on. Years later in 2015, teenage girl Casey sneaks into NASA launch site in Florida to sabotage all the machinery that will be used for the demolition because she doesn't want her dad, who works as a NASA engineer, to lose his job. Athena is watching it all from the shadows and after Casey returns home, Athena uses a small scanner to get Casey's DNA from her bike helmet and codes it into her last Tomorrowland pin. The next morning, Casey's dad Eddie gets a call from work explaining the situation. Casey thinks she's saved his job, but Eddie reveals they'll bring replacement cranes so Casey really needs to stop trying. However Casey reminds him keeping up hope is more important. In the evening, Casey tries to sabotage the demolition again, but this time the police are waiting for her and she gets arrested. Some hours later, someone pays the bail, and Casey picks up her belongings to return home. Among all the things she finds the pin and when she touches it, she suddenly sees a vision of a different place. The pin falls, and when Casey touches it again, the same thing happens. The next time, Casey grabs the pin properly and finds herself looking at a huge city in the distance, but when she tries to walk to it, the pin falls and she is in jail again because walking made her bump against things and people in the room. To avoid more trouble, Casey picks up the pin using gum wrapper. At that moment, Eddie shows up to pick Casey up after paying the bail. On their way home, he scolds Casey for her actions, so she makes him touch the pin, promising it'll explain everything. However when Eddie touches the pin, nothing happens. Confused, Casey touches the pin herself and appears in the other world, coming to the conclusion this only works for her. Eddie gets tired of Casey rambling about the pin and takes it away from her. When they get home, Casey waits for Eddie to fall asleep to steal the pin from his night table. As soon as she touches it she appears in the other world, and walking toward the city makes her bump against the walls of her house and even fall down the stairs. The noise wakes Eddie up, causing Casey to hide and decide to do this somewhere else. Casey goes to the middle of a huge field and touches the pin, allowing her to finally appear in Tomorrowland. While taking the train to go further into the city, she discovers the pin has a timer that is going down and that nobody can see her. Casey leaves the train at the next stop and she sees some important scientists entering a different kind of wagon. She tries to follow them, but suddenly water appears around her because the pin timer is about to reach zero. Casey tries to ignore it and pushes through the water, but soon Tomorrowland disappears and Casey finds herself in a swamp. As soon as she returns home, Casey wakes her brother Nate up and asks him for the password to their dad's computer. The siblings search for the pin online and find an ad from a store that will buy these pins from anyone. Casey writes down the shop address and asks Nate to tell their father she's going camping with some friends. In the morning, Athena shows up at the house, so Nate gives her the camping excuse. Athena can tell he's lying and pressures him until he finally confesses. Meanwhile Casey makes it to the shop from the ad. The eccentric clerks are clearly interested in it and confirm that what Casey saw was real. Tomorrowland is a place where all the brightest minds gather to create freely without the chains of government and greed, and the only way to access the city is through the pin. The clerks want to buy the pin and to know where Casey got it, but when Casey refuses to cooperate, they press a button to lock the door and reveal a pair of futuristic weapons that can shoot plasma. Casey tries to hide among the merchandise but the clerks find her anyway and demand information on some girl. Suddenly, a grenade breaks through the window and freezes the clerks inside a force field. An armed Athena enters the shop too and explains it's a time bomb that won't last long, then helps Casey get her hand out of the field. 
Unfortunately this causes the bomb to shut off and the clerks are free again, so they counterattack. Athena fights them hand to hand with the help of Casey throwing merchandise at them, and when Athena removes one of their heads, Casey is shocked to discover both clerks were animatronics. After announcing the animatronics are about to self-destruct, Athena drags Casey out of the shop just in time to avoid the explosion. Then Athena breaks a car window to open it and pushes Casey inside before using a special tool to make the car start as she explains they need to escape before they find them. On the road, Casey begins asking questions, and Athena tells her she was the one that gave her the pin. Before she can say more, she suddenly begins malfunctioning, and Casey watches in horror how Athena fixes herself because she's an animatronic as well. Scared, Casey jumps out of the car and Athena tries to follow her, but as soon as she steps on the road, a truck hits her. The driver immediately comes to check on her, and Casey takes the chance to steal the truck to escape. However Athena is just fine and immediately runs after the truck, jumping through the window to steal the keys and lock the door. Casey begins yelling, and Athena finally manages to shut her up by conforming Casey as her last pin and they need to quickly go to Tomorrowland because they built something they shouldn't have. Meanwhile the cops arrive at the exploded store and discover a burned robot head. Before they can investigate more, a man named Dave shows up, introducing himself as Secret Service. After seeing the robot head, Dave also pulls out a futuristic weapon and kills all the cops before turning to his companions, announcing they've found the girl and they should tell Nix. The girls are making their way to New York to find the only person that can get them back into Tomorrowland. Casey begins asking questions about the other people that got pins, but Athena can't answer and shuts down. The next morning, Athena wakes up and takes over the driving so Casey can rest. Athena tells Casey that the person they'll be visiting is called Frank, and once Casey falls asleep, Athena keeps herself entertained by remembering all the good times she used to have with her friend. Hours later, Casey wakes up when she's suddenly pushed off the truck in front of a house in the countryside. Seeing as Athena's driving away, Casey has no choice but to approach the house, only to be chased by a guard dog. Casey trips and falls on the mud, which makes her realize the dog is not leaving prints because it's a hologram. Ignoring the fake beast, Casey knocks on the door and shows her pin to the camera, asking to be taken to Tomorrowland. A sudden burst of air pushes Casey back and an older Frank comes out of the house, demanding to know where Athena is. Hearing she's gone angers Frank and he tells Casey to leave because Tomorrowland is nothing but a manipulative lie. Then Frank returns to his house and locks the door. Casey refuses to leave and waits outside even while it rains. Eventually, she gets tired and looks around to make a plan. By starting a fire on the plowing truck, Casey gets Frank to leave the house, and while he's too busy putting the flames out, Casey runs inside and locks the door. When Frank tries to enter again, Casey just pushes him back with the same burst of air. Casey begins looking around the house, finding all sorts of crazy inventions. One particular machine plays a record of little Frank trying to make Athena laugh, and Athena telling him to stop trying. In another room, she finds a bunch of screens keeping up with the news and a timer that is slowly going down. Suddenly, a secret door under the stairs opens and Frank gets back into the house, ready to kick Casey out, but she convinces him to give her some answers. Frank was kicked out of Tomorrowland for building something he shouldn't have, which is the timer connected to the screens. He wonders if Casey would want to know the date of her death and she says yes, but accepting her death may actually cause it, so she wouldn't believe it because they need to be able to make their own destiny. This statement causes the percentage on the screen to fall, which greatly impresses Frank. Their conversation is suddenly interrupted by the arrival of Dave and his agents, who are actually robots looking for Casey. Frank immediately activates all the metal blinds, and when one robot uses her strength to get inside anyway, Frank uses a tool to electrocute her. Another robot is destroyed by an electrical trap on the wall, and Frank gets rid of two more by making them fall through a secret trapdoor. Then Frank and Casey run to the living room, where one more robot is waiting. Frank fights it hand to hand, and Casey helps him win by grabbing a special portal machine and sticking the robot inside. The duo makes their way upstairs, where more robots fall into the different traps around the house, until Dave catches up to them and holds Frank at gunpoint. Luckily Casey finds a bat and uses it to beat Dave to a pulp. Frank then drags Casey into the bathroom and they jump into the tub, which Frank activates to transform it into a capsule. One more robot comes after them and tries to grab the tub, but at that moment Frank launches it, causing the capsule to fly out and land on the lake. Frank and Casey swim out and enter the woods, where Frank has hidden a bike that won't start. The duo is suddenly startled by a light approaching them but it's just Athena that came to pick them up. The trio leaves in the truck and as soon as they hit the road, Frank and Athena begin arguing. It's revealed that all pins were supposed to be destroyed, and Athena escaped with the last box of 12 to keep on recruiting people. Frank is furious that more young people have been dragged into this and tells Casey that Athena lied, she doesn't shut down if you ask too many questions, it's just her ignoring you. Frank thinks Athena puts up fake emotions to lure you in and abandon you later. Athena is hurt but ignores it for now to take them to the local station where Frank has installed his secret network that transmits to his house. There there's another capsule waiting for them, and once the humans are wearing the proper protection, they activate the system that teleports them away. 
Once they arrive, Casey discovers they're at the top of the Eiffel Tower. There's a guard near the door, but luckily Frank has brought a bunch of inventions in his bag, including a little tool that allows Casey to knock the guard out with just a light tap. They enter a room with an exhibition with famous inventors, and Frank explains that Eiffel, Verne, Tesla, and Edison were the ones that started Tomorrowland by using the Eiffel Tower as an antenna that took them to the other world. There have always been rumors of a secret entrance, and after searching around, Frank activates it. This causes the Eiffel Tower to split into two and reveal a rocket, so the trio hurries inside as more robots arrive to capture them. The energy that the rocket expels when taking off pushes the robots away, and after flying up for a while, the robot goes back again, opening a portal as it falls at a great speed. Moments later, the group arrives in Tomorrowland. The authorities saw them fall and are coming after them, so Frank makes Athena hide a special bomb he brought with him inside her body. The first one to meet them is Nix, the city governor, who wants to arrest them. Frank and Athena quickly change his mind by informing him Casey was capable of lowering the percentage on the screens. Shocked, Nix takes the trio to the headquarters where they keep Frank's dangerous invention, called a tachyon machine. When they take the elevator, Casey sees holograms which happen to be flashes of the future, caused by the machine that utilizes a particle that moves significantly faster than light. The group enters the center of the machine and Frank teaches Casey how to use it, allowing her to look at any point in humanity's history. Casey is shocked to see herself in her house a few mornings ago, and Frank explains the machine can also look forward, so Casey begins going through history at a high speed until she finally sees the issue. The machine has predicted that in 58 days, the world will end. Casey doesn't understand why they aren't warning people on Earth, and Nix explains he doesn't care because that's the world that will end, not Tomorrowland. And he won't allow anyone to move in because they'll do to Tomorrowland the same thing they did to Earth. Casey refuses to accept this, and her attitude causes the screen to flicker for a second, showing a better world. Frank tries to point out this proves there's a chance, but Nix just knocks them all out. Moments later, Frank wakes up and finds Athena telling them they'll be deported again. Casey is depressed because this whole adventure has been for nothing, and when Frank tries to comfort her she snaps, accusing them of lying to her. As she begins to rant, she suddenly has a moment of realization. Frank has been pirating the machine signal to watch it at his house, and the signal is floating around Earth, zapping these ideas of doom into people's minds. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy, but if Casey could change it with her optimism, it means that turning it off would allow people to see the light again. The guards come to pick the trio up so they can be kicked out of Tomorrowland through a portal. Casey tries to tell Nix about her discovery and asks him to turn off the machine, but Nix says there's no off button. His calm attitude makes Frank realize the truth, Nix is putting the idea in people's heads on purpose. Nix explains that in the past, trying to tell the government about the incoming doom was ignored, thus he sent the idea directly to people's heads as a warning to make them change their ways. However instead of working for a better future, humanity accepted the end of the world as inevitable. In Nix's opinion, it isn't the machine's fault, humanity has brought this to itself. Frank pretends to accept this and shakes hands with Nix, but only to touch his bracelet and start the machine platform again. Athena and Casey knock out the guards while Frank fights Nix, who activates two robots to go after the girls. Frank asks Athena to use the bomb he gave her, but when Athena tries to, the robots catch her. Athena passes the bomb to Casey while she fights the robots, and Casey runs to the platform, which starts moving like crazy because Frank and Nix keep fighting over the bracelet on the other side of the portal. Athena gains control of one of the robots and uses it to push the other one through the portal, causing it to attack Nix too. Casey manages to activate the bomb by watching a flash of the future, but when she's about to throw it, Nix regains control of the bracelet and drags the platform down. Athena rushes to catch the platform with her robot then runs to the control panel to close the portal, destroying the second robot and leaving Frank and Nix outside. At that moment, Casey finds the bomb, which is about to explode. Athena has no choice but to open the portal again, and once the men run back inside, they throw the bomb into the portal so it can explode away from them. The portal breaks and falls on top of Nix, capturing him. However there's a gun nearby that he reaches in order to kill Frank. Athena sees Frank dying and realizes it's a flash from the future, so she runs to put herself between Frank and the shot. Casey takes the gun from Nix and Frank tries to take Athena to a repair shop, but Athena asks him to stop because there isn't enough time. Before she died, she needs Frank to know something very important, and she proceeds to play a series of recordings from the time they spent together all those years ago. Little Frank used to have a crush on Athena, but he was hurt when he realized she was a machine. This always bothered Athena and she kept voice diaries that described how Frank made her feel things that robots shouldn't. Frank is glad to hear Athena did like him too and that she never stopped believing in him, so now it's time for Athena to go. Her body is about to self-destruct and she wants them to use that explosion to stop the machine. Frank uses a jetpack to fly Athena up, and after they say their goodbyes, Athena is dropped inside the machine. The whole structure explodes and the debris falls on Nix, killing him. Tomorrowland loses its power and Frank tries to keep control of the jetpack to at least land safely in the river. 
Casey rushes to check on him and as they begin talking about what to do next, a bunch of flashes from the future gives them an idea. First Frank fixes the portal so Casey can reunite with her family. Then together they begin working on restarting the PIN program, for which they build a bunch of robots like Athena. These robots use a portal to travel all over the world and leave pins for the bright minds that may help them make a better future for Earth. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.